Yes guys, I am back with another video today. Um, this is a video I've been kind of debating whether to share or not. If you follow me on my Instagram, you know about it. If you don't follow me on my Instagram, go follow me on my Instagram for sure. Um, for those of you guys who don't know who I am, my name is Alfie Jade. I am a property investor slash business investor. Um, and today I am sharing with you what I learned when I went out to Miami uh, to Grant Cardone's three day business bootcamp. So stick around to the end. This video will be packed with so much value. So guys, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are, anything you resonate with. Please, please share. Um, but yeah, stick around to the end. Praise God, bro. So, um, yes, like I said, this was something I wasn't sure if I was going to share or not. Um, I've got some clips of what it was like being out there in Miami. Um, but I want to get straight into it. So I've got five points or five takeaways that I personally took away from going to this uh, three-day business bootcamp. Number one is around the concept of stagnation. So as a business owner, you might get comfortable with your current revenue level. Let's say you're doing five million pound in revenue. You might feel like, oh, I'm doing five million pound in revenue. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm great. Um, and want to kind of stay at that level. And what we're being taught in that room was basically the fact that stagnation is still as a state of decline and it's not even just it's not even it is a state of decline because 5 million 2020 5 million 2021 5 million 2022 you're doing the same amount of work doing the same achieving the same number of revenue but you're actually making less because as we know inflation is getting higher and higher uh so the, the, the buying power of the pound is going down so if you're only making, if you're still making the same numbers you did two years ago, or if you kind of want to relate a bit better, if you're earning the same amount of money you did two years ago, you're working the same amount of hours but earning less. So you want to be in a state of whatever the state is, whatever you're gonna call this. You want you want to keep growing, basically. Is, is the message you? So don't feel like you've got to a certain stage and you want to kind of flatten out. Because flatten out and being stagnant definitely isn't. Um, you being remaining the same, you're actually declining. Um, so that's that's point number one. Point number two is about, I guess, it's a mindset shift. So it's about focusing on value creation and not worrying about other things. So, i.e., in a business, your value creation is in essence what you get paid, which is top, your top line, your revenue. So, how much money is a business receiving every single month? That's where you want to focus your energy on. The bit below. It's kind of secondary to um, to that because without this, there is no bottom part anyways. You can't pay your employees. You can't do anything else. So as a business owner, your top line is the only number you need to be focused on. I said the only number. It's, out of all of them, is the most important number you need, to, you need to be worried about the most because the rest can't happen without the top. Um, and again, it kind of banged on about this quite a lot. Um, and a lot of people kind of worry about their expenses, i.e. how much they pay their videographer, how much you pay your on your marketing what you gonna i think flip the script is what's the value add in the money you're you're utilizing um and obviously again you can't even utilize the money if there's no top line i.e your revenue coming in so you need to as a business owner f think about what ways can you generate new revenue what ways can you can you offer your customers better opportunities to then be able to charge them a higher ticket or higher price um to therefore increase your top line and therefore, naturally, your bottom line will start to look better and better and better. So again, it's kind of just giving your attention to the right areas in your business. Like Grant used to say, like 95% of his time is focused on the top line and only 5% of his time is spent looking at the, the expenses and what's below below the, the top line, basically. He doesn't he doesn't care about the bottom line. He's like, well, if I'm not making no money, what's, what am I looking at the bottom line for? Like, what profit? Why don't I care about the profit? There, there is no profit to even, to even look at if the top line is, isn't, isn't bringing in money. So for him, he's big on his team, focused on new ways to generate income. That's why you see him have so many different offerings and so many different packages. And he's always, I guess, keeping up with the times and knowing what's available, what opportunities are available in the market and how to position himself as somebody um, that can attract, um, I guess, revenue, if that makes sense, by adding value to other people. So that was that was point number two for me. Point number three is a bit of a, a crazy statement. Um, well, this is this one's from Grant Cardin himself, um, but he says price is made up. And again, it might be a mindset thing, or you need to get your head around it. 
but in essence what he's saying is there is no real like the price is whatever you want to make it like the cost of this phone could be ten thousand pounds to one person the cost of it to be to another person could be a thousand pounds so it's understanding or how do you position this to be able to receive ten thousand pounds versus um only receiving a hundred pounds so for him he's like worry about the value you're bringing to the person because if there's enough value the price can be whatever you want it to be like i, I kind of say to like a business owner if i also be someone who had the skill set of of uh, from a background of marketing for example and i can come into your business and add two three four five million pounds into of revenue to your business what would that be worth to you you might say that's worth 100 grand to my business owner that could be worth 100 grand so no business owner, that could be worth worth a million pounds. So there is, like, both people are doing exactly the same thing. So it's about going to the right people or offering it to the right person who's in a position to be able to pay you the price you think you you deserve. Because uh, I promise you, you can find a uh, to kind of make it more relatable. I guess you could find someone doing a job who could be an assistant to somebody only getting twenty five grand, and another person doing exact same roles for another person. Um, and they're earning 100 grand being an assistant and again it's just because that person one is probably potentially around someone that earns a lot more money and therefore to that person the value they're paying them to handle those tasks as being, as being an assistant is worth x amount and hence they have to pay that price versus the other person is only willing to pay that price because that's what they think it's worth to them so price is made up and um, don't get too fixated if you're somebody that's kind of got a price offering the market just focus on value creation, focus on, on providing value, focus on over delivering. That will allow you to charge whatever price you want to charge um, and actually get the price you deserve. So, yeah, it's a mindset shift. But again, I think that was massive for me um, and a takeaway that I kind of brought back and have now implemented into my business as well. Point number four is for me, it was so impactful. Um, this is around feeling rejection. Um, so in the marketplace, we might go out. In my case, I'm raising finance all the time and I'm speaking to investors trying to raise finance. I could be trying to get property deals and I'm getting rejected all the time um, because for whatever reason, people are offering better figures than me or favors me quicker than me, whatever it is. So Grant made the comment of uh, rejection can only be felt, I guess rejection is a, is, is a, is a trait um, by not having a great pipeline of, of opportunity because he's like, well, if you had a thousand opportunities, like readily available, like good opportunities, and one person said no, are you really going to feel rejection? The answer is no, because you know you've got 999 um, people to go to next. So how can you feel rejection? So in the, in, in to kind of relate, in the raise investment world, by me having thousands of people to kind of raise finance from, one person saying no, they can't do the deal, not even because they, they just don't want to do the deal, maybe just not the right time, whatever the reason is. Being in a position where I have multiple options, allows me not to feel a disheartened or rejection and allows me to still feel confident and still move forward because I know I've got several other options I can kind of go to and present these opportunities to. So creating a pipeline, whether it's your audience, whether it's your investors, whether it's your properties you're trying to close on, having a pipeline um, is the best thing you can do for yourself to help your business, to help your confidence. Um, and you should be able to still keep moving forward even when things don't go the way you want it to go so for me like for me i want to block my pipeline in all ways possible um so that's something i'm working on myself again something i brought back to the uk which i'm gonna have, i've already started implementing my business um so again nothing 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 new probably you didn't think of or doesn't sound probably logical when you hear it um but again it's always good to kind of hear these things back in your ears again and then The last point, um, point number five, is all around, um, again, another, another strong, bold comment from Grant Cardone. And this is about 100% of leads buy. Again, you might think, no, no, that's not true. That's factually speaking, that's not true. But from the perspective of if someone comes into your ecosystem or your funnel um, or someone says, I'm interested in something, they are a buyer. Like, that's that's a lead. They're and And they're... And, the fact that they message you to inquire means that they're looking for something, a product, or they're, look, they're looking for that offering. So that lead is willing to buy. Now is, are they willing to buy from you or buy from somebody else? Because they've inquired, nobody goes out asking for something that they're not interested in 
unless they're interested. So if they're interested, it means that they're willing to buy in whatever the service is or they're willing to buy into whatever the product is. So for me, that click, like, I'm like, yo, we've, we've potentially had leads where we haven't closed for whatever reason. It actually happened with us um, where we had someone who was interested in the mastermind. Um, we just didn't follow up. And because they had something in the time they couldn't afford it or whatever. Um, and we, we didn't follow up with them. So later on, we've gone back to follow up and they've now said, look, we actually joined this mastermind. Um, and again, it just shows or t I guess proves what Grant is saying where all leads are like 100% of leads buy. Um, in this case, they didn't buy from us for whatever reason and they went with somebody else and it could have just been simply because we didn't follow up and we weren't in their forefront of their mind because again, if someone is marketing or consistently marketing in front of this person, that's who's in front of their mind and not me. So if I'm not putting myself out there to know that I had this offering and this is how, how much value I can bring to them and they're not aware of it, then they're not buying from me, but they, they're interested, but just, they just don't, don't see me often enough to, for, for, for them to be thinking about me. Uh, so that my other competitor, my brand, or the other brand out, out there is, 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 is getting the attention of this person. So again, com a combination of marketing alongside that um, obviously allows you to convert uh, these guys into, into buyers. So it's just taking that, again, that principle that 100% of leads buy and knowing that if you capture a lead by form of e whether it's an email or phone number and they're in your system is how do you keep following up and keep marketing to that person to that person's position where they can they can do business with you um to allow you to convert them into a buyer and not allow them to go elsewhere to spend money with somebody else um so for me that that was a massive massive thing that I came back and I addressed very very quickly um I was like, I'm not going to go into that now, but um, that 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 was something I've obviously took away from that and wanted to implement uh, myself. So, guys, obviously the three day business boot camp, a lot happened in terms of networking, meeting people, exchanging numbers, sharing ideas, um, learning stuff. Obviously, I've just only shared five points with you. I can't, I can't share the whole thing, unfortunately, because um, a lot there was a lot that was said during those three days. Um, so I hope what I've shared with you has been of some some sort of value to you. Let me know in the comments if you thought this was a value or what points resonate with you the most in the comments. Please share that. So guys, that's it. Um, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Obviously as well, if you thought this video was of great value, please, please, please share the video out and get it around for me. Um, every share, every WhatsApp group you share this video into helps me and help my channel grow. So please, any way you can help, help this channel grow will be much appreciated. Uh, but guys, until next time, I shall see you on the next video. Take care.